Hi, I'm Marisa Churchill, chef, food blogger, and Greek American. I'm about to show you a side of Greece you've never seen. Today, I'm heading to Kiparisia, a seaside village in the Peloponnesos. There I'll meet with a food forager who left his career in London to head back to his Greek roots. In the process, he carved out a blossoming career in the culinary industry. What makes Kiparisia so unique is that it stretches both out to the sea and up into the mountains, giving you the best of both worlds. The houses are all traditional Greek homes with a platia, or town square, in the center. That is where I'm headed to meet Sotiri for a cup of coffee. Kalimera, Marisa. Kalimera. Tikaris. Kala. Kalos. Good. Yes. Thank Welcome. you. It's so good to be here. Oh, look at this. Oh, how lovely. Oh, it's perfect. I need some coffee. Yes. Oh, some traditional Greek coffee. So I'm so excited about today. Yes, we're gonna have a very good day. This is such a great village. Yes. You know, we're in the old town of Parsia, the town that people used to live uh -huh. many years ago. So what's the first thing that we're going to do today? The first thing is that uh, we're going to go to the mountain and uh, search for wild artichokes. Oh my god, that's going to be exciting. We will see. <laughs> After Sotiri explained to me that foraging for wild artichokes can, quote, be a bit dangerous, I'm curious to see what he meant. Yeah. Here, here we are. Here? Here, this is, this is the wild artichoke. Holy <laughs> are you kidding me? No, no, this is the plant from where all the artichokes of the world it's, has begun. It's more thorns than it is artichoke. I mean, I'm not sure if that's a vegetable or a weapon. How do you gather these? I will show you. You, have, you must have the right tools. Ow. <laughs> these things are dangerous. No, no, it's not. So first, you must have gloves. OK. You want to try? I like that. OK. I'm going to watch you first. OK. <laughs> So you just have this. Okay. And you cut. All right, so I'm going for it. Would you like to, to taste one? I would love to taste one, but um, again, there's thorns all over it. Are you going to show me? I, I'm assuming we have to clean that, right? Yeah, You're of course, show, of perfect. Course. You're going to show me how to clean it? All right, first, I'm going to try and take one. Let's okay. see what happens. Hopefully, I don't. All right, so I grab it here and then yeah? I cut. Yes, you got it. And this is the food. Okay. Now I want to toss into that ham, but I don't think I'm going to do that. Just, just throw, throw it in the basket. In the basket? Okay. So you take this and you start cleaning. without even cooking it. So let's collect some. Perfect. After taking off all the thorns and stickers and eating that tender heart, you understand why it's worth the effort. This is the real gourmet. The smell of wild thyme in summer fills the air in Greece. Oh my god, this is one of my favorite things to actually find growing wild in Greece is the thyme because it's just, it's so fragrant here. I mean, you can smell it everywhere and the flavor, it has a much stronger flavor here than it does when you get it in the States. Yes, it's, it's, it's completely different. When something's wild, it's much, strong, much stronger. Oh my, I mean, it's just such an incredible flavor. God, you can smell it in the whole valley. Yeah, it's full <laughs> of thyme here. I know, there's just thyme bushes everywhere. This is fantastic. All right, well, let's get to it. How are we going to do this? OK, it's, it's very simple. We just take only the upper part. The weather in Greece can be full of surprises. It can be warm and sunny, and in one moment, it can change to wet and rainy. Lucky for me, Sotiris came prepared. After exploring the culinary flora and fauna of the mountainside, we decided to head down towards the sea to see what sort of culinary treasures awaited us there. So, we 
back here. Oh my God, you have taken me to so many incredible places today. Look at this, I can't believe it. <laughs> what is it's this? Is this samphire? This samphire in Greece, we call it like sea spanangus or armirifi. Uh, armirifi. Yes, we usually uh, use it when we eat fish. And we want so something to go with the fish and with this. All winter, the sea is up here. It's here. You so, can tell too, just from looking at the area. Yes. So this is, if you taste it, it's very, very salty. Oh my God, it's like you're tasting the sea in your mouth. It's incredible. Yes. No, so I understand now why it has the word Almiri in the, in the name, which of course yes, is the name. for it's salt. Like yeah. salty. Yeah. It's very salty. And the, the way that we collect it, it's very important. First of all, not to destroy this thing because nature wants many, many, many years to create all of this. So we have to be very careful. Okay. Don't so want this to is try the word root. This is why we use the right uh, tools. Oh my goodness, now what is this bush here? Mm -hmm. This bush is called Kritamos. 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 It's also very salty with a different taste. So I can try this too. Of course. Mm, yeah, it has kind of a Bit an herbaceous flavor to it. It's very good if you cook it with the, the wild garlic. That we're oh going really? To, we're going to collect it in a, in a few minutes. Oh great! You're giving me some inspiration for the kitchen then. Yes. Oh my God! The wild garlic! I've been so excited about this. Yes. Oh, I love wild garlic. Mainly wild garlic uh, grows next to the sea, and the difference is that. You eat the upper part. Yes. The upper part that is very soft and tastes like garlic. Which I love. The, the flavor of this reminds me more of green onion, actually, than garlic. But it does. It has such an interesting garlicky flavor at the end. But not what you think of. I mean, you'd never want to eat a clove of raw garlic, just plain. But this you actually can. It's much more subtle. Yes, and, and it's, it doesn't smell. Exactly. After. Exactly. Your hands don't <laughs> smell after cooking it. Sea snails are a culinary treat that can be prepared like escargot, bringing with them the flavors of the Mediterranean. We're heading up to the old castle overlooking Kiparisia, where Sotiri has promised to cook for me. This has been such an amazing day. I mean, what a surprise. What a view. I can't believe this. This is incredible. I'm glad that you like it. I love it. So, what are we going to make now? So, we're going to make something very simple. So, we're going to cook like my yaya used to yes. cook. Yes. So, All right. this is the wild garlic. Uh -huh. You remember we have collected it? We just cut it. Simple, perfect, classic Greek cooking. I love it. It could sometimes, I used to put some olive oil in the water. Oh, okay. You know, I've got to tell you, I was a little bit dubious first when I first thought about coming up here. And I thought, how could he leave London to come to a little village and spend all this time, all day, just wandering around looking for wild greens and herbs? But after spending the day with you, I completely understand it. I mean, this has been amazing. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know, I used to live in a big, big city and one day I said, okay, what I'm doing here, I wake up in the morning and I see cement and uh, cars and uh, a lot of people running and uh, talking about money all the time. And I said, okay, this is not good life. You have to change your life immediately. And I just took my, my stuff and came here. I came here and said, okay, I'm here now. What am I going to do for a living? <laughs> and I, I just created a job up on my hobby. Well, that's what's so amazing. I mean, because foraging, while it's very popular in the States, it's actually something quite unique here in Greece. I mean, there's not a lot of people that are foraging no, and selling fact, their products. The difference in what I'm doing is that I, I take this uh, goods uh -huh. and I, I think and I find ways and combine them with the food of a restaurant. 
I put them in restaurants. But yeah, you sell to some of the top, most well-known restaurants in mm -hmm. Greece, and actually some of the most well-known restaurants in all of the world, such as Milos. Yes, so, this yeah. is very good. Okay, now it's time to throw in the samphire. Throw the samphire in the water. Oh, I'm hungry. So after all the running around we've been doing all day, and this is smelling amazing. Okay, and now it's very simple. We just wait about seven minutes. Let that boil. Oh my god, I'm starving. This smells incredible. I mean, something so simple and yet so amazing. I mean, but that's part of what makes it so amazing. I mean, just simple quality ingredients. It's time to serve. Time to serve? All right, let me help you. I mean, just the smell of the samphire. I mean, you can smell the sea, you can smell the garlic. I mean, the water's actually turned into this amazing broth. Already. Perfect. Perfect. There you go. Well, as would you mind if I eat with my hand? I don't mind at all. Okay, as, they, as they say in Greece, Kaliorexi. Kaliorexi. Or bon appetit. <laughs> oh my god. Mm -hmm. This is incredible. This is one of the most amazing meals. Oh, okay. You can cook with me anytime. Whenever. Absolutely. I mean, we've got all this product. If you want, you can come back to Athens with me and cook with me now. Okay, you even I don't like Athens very much for you. I will do it. I will come. With such great product, come on. Okay, let's great. go. All right, let's go for it. <laughs> now that we've spent the day in Sotiri's hometown, I'm excited to bring him back to Athens to do some cooking with me. Before Sotiris arrives, I still have time to do some shopping, and there's a few ingredients I still need to pick up. I always find it relaxing and inspiring to walk around Athens, a city rich with culture and history. Wandering through the Athens markets is a unique shopping experience. You can stumble upon the Acropolis and pass by all sorts of small shops filled with traditional products. Elinika Kaludia underneath the Acropolis is one of my favorite shops. It has excellent products made from small producers all around Greece. I'm looking for the ideal orange marmalade and some thyme honey. I'm very happy that I'm uh, here in Athens with you, in your house, and we're about to cook together. Yes, well, we're actually going to go ahead and make the dessert. Great, I, I like desserts. <laughs> Perfect. What are you going to do with this? Well, actually, the thyme that we picked the other day gave me a great inspiration because I actually used thyme in one of the desserts in my cookbook. And it's a traditional Greek dessert, karidopita, walnut cake. Thyme actually goes beautifully with walnuts and oranges, so we're going to go ahead and make that today. I've never thought that we can use thyme in a sweet. Oh yes, it's beautiful. I'll show you. Go ahead and grease the pan. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and throw all of the dry ingredients into the bowl, and I use a mixture of whole wheat flour and all-purpose flour for this. Then throw in just a little pinch of salt, some baking soda, some cinnamon, and a little bit of clove for flavor. Some ground walnuts. Go ahead and whisk all of those together. And then I'm going to put all of the wet ingredients into this bowl, so the eggs. And then one of the things that I also do with this recipe, I like to put in some low-fat Greek yogurt. It gives the texture to the cake, just some real beautiful texture. And then we'll throw in just a little bit of some beautiful olive oil. And 
add a little bit of orange juice into the cake, which will really complement the thyme nicely. And some orange zest. Do you want to go ahead and do the zest? Yes, of course. And then we'll go ahead and throw the sugar into this bowl. Is that enough? Yeah, I think that's good. All right, go ahead and whisk that together. And this cake will bake for about 30 minutes, which will give us plenty of time to use all the wonderful vegetables that we found yesterday to make our meal. All right, let's go here. All right, there we go. Perfect, the batter's done. Now, did I not lie? Was that easy or what? Uh, can, I, can I try a little bit? You can try a little bit, sure. Yeah. Oh, it's nice, yeah. huh? And nice and light and healthy for you, too. I mean, we've got some orange juice in here, just a tiny bit of olive oil, the Greek yogurt, and of course our walnuts, which are high in omega-3 fatty acids. You don't even have to feel guilty about eating this cake, so it's ready to go. Well, I think we should probably go ahead and start with the artichokes. Can you just boil them? Okay, I think it's time to take them off. They're ready. Oh, perfect. Oh yeah, now they're nice and soft, easy to handle. Perfect. It's a good idea to put some uh, cold water. Yeah, so. let them cool. So that way they, you want to actually, if you, whenever you're cooking vegetables, you want to always put them under some cold water, otherwise they'll keep cooking for about five minutes. So if the vegetables are perfect when you take them out of the water, throw them in some cold water so that they immediately cool off and don't keep cooking. All right, well now that you've finished cleaning the artichokes and we have the hearts all cleaned up and ready to go, let's go ahead and boil the greens. Okay. And the quinoa. Quinoa is actually a superfood, so it's really, really good for you. It's actually um, higher in fiber than any other grain. It has iron and it has twice the amount of protein, so it's an excellent grain to use. Great. Um, it doesn't have a lot of flavor though, so I recommend if you're going to actually cook with quinoa that you boil it with vegetable broth, chicken broth, or in this case, fish stock. Great. And this will take about 20 minutes to boil. Go ahead and throw the greens in there. And you know, actually we're cooking with two superfoods today because I was just reading an article mm -hmm. and they were talking about how samphire is the new hot superfood. Yes? Yeah, because it has vitamins A, vitamins B, vitamin C, and it's really high in folic acid. So it's super good for us. I so didn't know that. Yeah, so we're gonna be eating very healthy today. <laughs> I'm very happy. <laughs> I'm very happy that I consume all these things. I have no idea uh, that they're healthy. They are super healthy. In fact, another thing that's super healthy that we're going to be cooking with is the wild garlic. But it's also um, really great if you have high blood pressure. It helps reduce your blood pressure and it has antibacterial properties. And what do you think? I think we're ready to go ahead and start my shrimp now. Okay, let's start. Gone ahead and heated the pan up already so that it's nice and hot. Let's go ahead and take a look at our greens. Oh. I think the greens are already done. They definitely don't need to cook for a long time. We definitely want to keep them nice and crisp and fresh. Mmm, I think they're done. Perfect, so the greens are done. Why don't we just put them right here? Do you want to go ahead and grab the white wine and the ouzo because we're going to add this in with the shrimp. It's going to be delicious. And do you want to give me a bay leaf? just for a little bit of sub, subtle flavor, because you know, bay leaf has a strong flavor, so we don't want a lot, we don't want to overwhelm. All right. And then we're gonna add in the white wine, which I have some more for us to enjoy later. It's a sirtico. Uh, a sirtico? Yes, uh, it's my favorite. It's my favorite too. It's, yes, my yeah. favorite. From Santorini? From Santorini, yes, of course, the Great. place where you must have it. Let's go ahead and throw in the wine now, and add the ouzo. Perfect. And once it's sucked up some of the wine, we'll let the, we'll let the onions have a drink with us. <laughs> then we'll go ahead and we'll add in the shrimp and just a hint of cream, just a little bit. Okay. Why don't you go ahead and start putting the shrimp in? Just put them in an even layer all around the pan. Then we'll flip them over when we need to. Perfect, oh my God, this is gonna be so good with the samphire, I'm excited. And sometimes too, what I like to do, just to help them cook evenly on both sides, is I take some of the sauce and I just start to spoon it on top like this. Let's check the quinoa again. All right, perfect, now it's done. It's sucked up all of the stock, it's ready to go. So I'll actually go ahead and take this just to cook the shrimp a little bit faster and I'll go ahead and cover it with this lid since we don't need it for the quinoa anymore. 
just a couple minutes for each side. We don't want the shrimp to be overcooked. We want them to keep them nice, plump, and juicy. Okay, so now to finish with the shrimp, let's go ahead and grab a lemon. And we'll cut it in half. And let's just go ahead and add in. Why don't you take just a tiny little spoonful of butter? Just take this spoon right here and just put a tiny, tiny bit in. And then we'll go ahead Give this all a stir with the lemon. Let's add in just a little more lemon juice. These are done, so I'm gonna go ahead and set these aside. And then we'll go ahead, why don't you hand me the other frying pan and we'll finish the salad, and then we can eat. Perfect, go ahead and throw that on there. Throw in just a few spoonfuls of olive oil. We're also going to go ahead and we're going to segment a lemon. I love putting some lemon in the salad because obviously the samphire is salty and even though the flavor of the salt is a really great flavor, we want some acid to cut that salt. So we'll just go ahead and we'll remove the peel here. Yeah, just this is really the easiest way to do it and then we'll just go ahead and hold it like this. And then we're just gonna go ahead and roughly chop this. And now our oil's hot. Why don't you go ahead and toss the parsley into the bowl and the cucumber. Perfect. Add in the lemon. Perfect. Now let's check on our garlic. Perfect, now that the garlic is fragrant, let's go ahead and add in the anise seeds. I'm gonna throw these in and just let them toast for a minute. Do you want to bring the artichoke hearts over here? All right, so now let's go ahead and add in the greens. Be so good. Perfect. Let's go ahead and pour this in. All right, I'm gonna get the plates. Why don't you stir all of that together? We are ready. Do you want to go ahead and spoon the salad on? Yeah. Oh, I'm so hungry. Marisa, this is so nice. It, I mean, it smells, it smells the sea. It's like being next to the sea. It does smell like the sea, you're right. I know, it's exactly what I was thinking about when we were next to the castle cooking the other day. It was great. Well, I don't get to try mine yet because I smell the cake and I think it's done. All right, the cake's ready to come out of the oven. Mm, I can smell the cake all over the house. Oh, I know, smell that. Don't get too close, you're gonna burn yourself. Well, now that the cake is cool, let's go ahead and get the plates and we can cut it and we can finally dig in. All right. Now, normally I serve this cake with thyme syrup, but I went to this amazing shop this morning in Athens that's near the Acropolis, and they had some wonderful marmalades there and some fabulous Greek honey. So we're gonna do it a little differently today. So instead of making the thyme syrup, I thought what we would do is we would take some of this delicious honey and we would just drizzle it on top of the cake. And then we'll go ahead and we'll actually just sprinkle a little bit of thyme on top of the cake and around. And then for this one, remember we put the orange zest and the orange juice into the cake. So we're gonna take some of this wonderful marmalade. I mean, smell this. I mean, it smells like an orange tree. It, it smells like my grandmother's. Oh, wow, even better. That's the, that's the biggest compliment you can give. Oh, perfect, look at that. So we'll just spoon some of that on top. And then let's take some of this that we gathered and we'll just boop. It's wonderful. Should we dig in? Yeah. All right. Now that all of the gathering and cooking is behind us, the time has come to sit down, relax, and enjoy a well-earned meal. I'm on my way to Lekavitos, a hill in the center of Athens that offers tremendous views of the city. It's one of my favorite places in Athens to relax and enjoy a drink. Taking the tram up to Lekavitos, one of the highest points in Athens, is the ideal way to view the city. 
It has a 360 degree view of Athens, connecting the modern and ancient city in a breathtaking view. With the hustle and bustle of the city now far below me, I thought of Sotiri and his small village. I understood why he had decided to leave London and return home. This was real. This was life. And this was Greece. <laughs>